So I've made a lot of videos ranking the best Bedwars kits, but one thing I haven't done is make a video on the most fun Bedwars kits. You know, sometimes it's not always about winning. You just want to chill and have fun. In fact, I think the majority of Bedwars players feel this way about the game. They're not so focused on being like try hard and winning, but they just want to mess around and have fun. That's why a lot of people kind of ruin the game for people that do want to win is they start building castles and stuff. You know, like I get it. You want to have fun. You don't really care. You just want to build up, defend, maybe get a few kills here and there. But in the end, you just want to have fun. And in this video, we're going to be going through 20 of the most fun kits in Bedwars. Now, this is not going to be a rank list, okay? So I'm not ranking like the most fun compared to this one. This one's more fun than that one. You know, fun is kind of subjective. All I'm going to say is that the kits that I'm going to go through shortly here are just plain fun. And not all of them are necessarily OP, okay? Some of these, like, for example, we're going to talk about Vulcan, and that's not really a kit that you're going to be using to win. <laughs> it's just, you don't really win games with Vulcan. You can, but you don't really win games with Vulcan. Before I begin, though, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Now, this probably comes as no surprise, but we're going to start out with Sheila. Sheila is basically an auto turret and healing kit that makes it a ton of fun to play with. You level up your seahorse by killing players or waiting out the timer where you automatically tick up points for it. She can deal a ton of damage, or the seahorse can. You can shoot through walls, the seahorse can heal you, it can heal your teammates, and so much more. There are multiple stages of the seahorse evolutions, and the ultimate evolution is when you receive a beam heal and a beam damage effect, which also applies the speed up to you, and it slows down your target. Pretty insane. When I just want to chill in any mode and just have some fun, I use this kit. I mean, I go with Sheila nowadays. She's crazy OP. Still, even after the nerf, she's really, really good. And I think she's tied as the number one kit overall in the game, no matter what. Next up is Pyro, and Pyro is a really fun kit. There's nothing like using your flamethrower to burn enemies behind blocks and see them run away from damage. It's even better when you see the flame above their heads, which indicates that they have Brittle ready to go. You've applied Brittle to them, and the next time you attack them, they're going to take some heavy, heavy damage. The only thing that's not so fun is having to go and get Emerald to be able to buy your flamethrower. But once that's out of the way, it's smooth sailing and straight up fun. If you can, try combining pyro with some cool enchantments like plunder, static, or lifesteal. Next up is a troll kit, and that is Vanessa. Vanessa is an absolute troll. Simply put, with triple shot, not only can you absolutely destroy players, but you can send them flying across the map with combined knockback. Bowing is one of my favorite things to do in Bedwars, if you didn't already know that by now. I mean, I get called bow spammer all the time. There's nothing like knocking people into the void and sending them backwards while they're trying to reach you. Then finishing them off since they keep forgetting to keep an eye on their health. So whenever I'm in a chill mood, I use Vanessa. The only downside is you're going to need a lot of arrows because you're, you know, shooting three arrows at a time. It's just, it runs out fast. Next up, we have Spirit Catcher, which was one of the best kits in the game. Even though she's gone through the ringer and back with all her nerfs, she's still a really good kit and fun to use. The spirits no longer really hurt. I mean, honestly, you can run into a pile of spirits and not really die, whereas before, you used to be able to just get absolutely destroyed by them. They're still really effective against enemies trying to sneak to get your bed or into your spawn. I still remember long ago, she was so powerful that I used to be able to take out fully stacked emerald armored players. But nowadays, it's a little tougher. Still, combine her with some enchantments, you're in good shape. Zurat's an odd kit, mainly in that most people don't know how to use him or understand how to use him, so they just don't use him. Zurat has a timer that ticks, and once the cooldown is finished, you can transform into a flying dragon that breathes a purple electrical fire called Dragon's Breath. It can break blocks, and it can do some heavy, heavy damage, especially AoE damage, in that you're attacking multiple players at once, and it's very similar to the flamethrower, but even more deadly. You can also fly, but each time you do, each time you flap your wings, you're going to lose that time for the effect or the transformation, so you got to be really careful about how you fly and when you fly and you definitely want to stay away from the void if you're really low on that energy. Still, once you add some gear and some enchantments, this thing is a beast and a ton of fun to mess around with. So Crypt may not be a very powerful kit, but it's a fun one. What I love about Crypt is that anytime your team kills someone, whether it be you or them, a little gravestone appears in the place of where the enemy stood. And it's kind of similar to like minor stones, you know, when you kill them and like a statue appears, but instead it's just going to be a little headstone. When you harvest the headstone, it gives you a soul, which you can then spawn skeletons with. Now, what's cool about this is you don't lose the souls. So if you die, you still have the soul, so you can still cast them after you die. So you don't really lose anything if you do die as Crypt. The other really funny thing about this is when you kill someone with better gear, like really good gear, like diamond gear or emerald gear, when you harvest their soul from the grave, if you cast their soul, it becomes a powerful minion or skeleton that sometimes has rage blades. So if you like killed an emerald armored player, then you're probably going to have a little rage blade wielding skeleton. It's pretty epic and fun. The only downside is sometimes your skeletons just kind of break down, like they get overwhelmed or maybe it gets too laggy and they just forget how to attack and sometimes just stand around like dummies. 
Next up, we have Vulcan, which is a camper's dream. You can get a turret and sit basically in the generator at spawn, collecting iron, diamonds, and emeralds while guarding your base with the turret. Get some enchantments and your turret does even more damage. I've mentioned this dozens of times, but the you know major downside of the Vulcan is that you're not fully paying attention to your surroundings since you're stuck in a turret. And so that means you could easily die if like an enemy jumps into your spawn or something while you're stuck in that tablet, you're probably gonna die. And that's no good if you're not able to like defend your base. A couple other negatives is that you need one emerald to buy a turret, which means that you do need to go out and touch grass a bit to get an emerald early game, or you get no turret. And the other is that your turret can be griefed by teammates. So if you're in like a 30v30, they can easily break your turret, or they can block it up, or fireball it, whatever. They're kind of mean. They do it to me all the time. So, you know, just a heads up. These days, you know, I haven't really seen them doing it as much, but they still do it. Griefers are griefers. Speaking of a camper's dream, another beauty of camping kits is Zenith Kit. Talk about a lazy, lazy kit. You need to head out and grab six emeralds at first, which is a little bit of work. But once you do, all you got to do is go back to base, buy your satellite dish, activate it, and just watch the resources come in for free. I mean, you could just sit on the generator and watch iron and emeralds coming into your inventory every couple seconds. It's insane. It's such a powerful kit. It's also a very lazy kit. But what's really fun about it is you don't really have to like worry about gear. You don't have to like you actually don't even need to sit in the generator if you want you can just kind of run around do stuff build stuff whatever you want and you're just going to get free iron um, as well as emeralds on top of that you're going to make the um, shop for the enemy team more expensive and that's how you make your cut now if you die then there goes your satellite so good luck now, who doesn't like fishing? The Fisherman Kit is a really fun kit since you never know what you're going to get each time you cast your fishing rod into the void. And if you get a goldfish, you're going to be really, really in for an awesome treat. Another added benefit to the Fisherman Kit is that you can hang out and watch your bed and fish while you're getting stacked with resources. Once upon a time, I did a four fisherman squad video while we were in ranked matches. And let me just say we crushed every single match. We were getting like tier three within under three minutes without ever even having to leave our base. It was awesome. But since then, we've seen a few nerfs to the kit. So it's still a ton of fun, just not as you know powerful as it used to be still i mean you can get coral blocks fireballs tnt emeralds and more like why wouldn't you like this kit now elder tree has to be one of the most fun kits in the game i know i said that a few times but it's just so simple you go around gather orbs and watch your wannabe group kit grow like you literally grow as a tree it would have been even funnier if you actually did look like group this kit gets stronger and stronger and it's always funny seeing players attack me not really and i have the equivalent of like diamond armor or emerald armor depending on how much hp i've stacked up beyond that this kit is just really simple and not at all difficult to use all you gotta do is go around literally collect these green orbs around the map and since you can't buy armor all you need to do is buy a good sword all that iron is just ready to go for a good sword instead of having to split it across multiple items and of course whatever else you want like bed breaking tools next up we have whim which is both a weak and powerful kit i say weak since you know you have sword damage reduction making you horrible horrible for close range combat however if you have good aim you can absolutely destroy players with this kit especially out the gate the one thing that i find super fun about this kit is that you get infinite ranged ammo right out of the spawn so you can start shooting the opponent across the map before they even have a chance to get like blocks the other is that after a moment a spell book or totem will you know spawn randomly on the map and if you go and pick it up you get a random enchantment that will buff your projectiles Next up, we have Hannah, which was recently the best kit in Bedwars and still competes for the number one spot with Sheila. What makes this kit super fun is the combos. So once you use your ability to kill someone, the next health requirement to kill the next person to combo off of them becomes lower and lower and lower again until you can absolutely wreak havoc on a full team because you don't need them to be too low of health to be able to kill them instantly. And you teleport to them. I mean, you got absolute instant teleportation. It's hard to like kill a Hannah that's teleporting all over the place. Um, the one thing I like to do is throw like a couple fireballs at a group of players and then I just assassinate them all. I think I've gotten like the most insta kills combos off of Hannah. Now we have Aerie and I have to say this is still my favorite kit in Bedwars. It's so simple. I mean she has like the most simple abilities beyond I think any kit in the game. Maybe I'm wrong but I just feel like it's so simple. All you gotta do is get kills and as you get kills your sword damage increases every single time you get a kill. It, it keeps scaling up to a point where you're you know actually one shotting other players. The key to this is to get at least 10 kills and after that it's really hard to take out Aerie because there's no visual indicator of how much damage she can do other than looking at her kills on the leaderboard you would have no idea she's gonna actually beat you in a 1v1 scenario i have iron armor you have an iron sword i have an iron sword but mine is probably doing twice as much damage as yours and you'd have no idea that that was the case she can still dominate honestly she can still dominate any kit that's currently in the game once you get stacked 
Next up, we have Kalia, which is a wild kit. It was definitely my go-to kit for a while until Sheila came out. But what's crazy about Kalia is her knockback punch. We'll just call it a fire punch. When players think they have the drop on you and then you get their back facing the void and punch them, they always have that like shocked moment when they get sent flying into the void, especially with the combined fire damage from her punch. Like if they have like only three balloons, they're pretty much dead. You know, there's no way to come back from that unless you can like clutch pearl or something. Still a super fun kit and can become very powerful like game, especially combining with enchantments and such. Definitely dig this one. The only downside is I find that Kalia can really get affected by lag, so it's not as fun as some of the other kits. Now, Lassie may seem like a meh kit, but she's really fun to play with and can actually be very powerful. She's certainly not a lazy player's kit since you need to be strategic about like your positioning and timing with her since the cooldown is so important for that lasso. And in some cases, you can accidentally end up killing yourself if you pull enemies that are more powerful than you or you try something risky. It's a really fun kit to troll with and always cracks me up when I yoink players into void. Now, Cyber Kit is another lazy player kit which makes it a lot of fun especially when trolling in 30v30s with tnt you could drop a ton of tnt on enemies without ever having to leave your base if someone kept feeding you tnt you don't even have to leave the drone you can just stay in the drone as long as they're feeding you tnt it's pretty hilarious but what's even better is you can hang out in the generator while jamming around gather emeralds diamonds and such around the map or you can even still like the enemy's gen if you really want to mess up their split now metal detector isn't as great as it used to be but it's still a fun kit to use and we're not really talking about what's great we're talking about what's fun and what i love about this kit is you no longer really need a generator and could just leave your bed at the very start of the game if you want, making you no longer tied to defending a bed and very much mobile, meaning, you know, go get some pearls and jam around the map. Once you've figured out how a metal detector works, it's a ton of fun. And, you know, a lot of people just are tired of the whole, like, rush meta, right? It's like, you gotta rush or you're dead. But you could do that with the metal detector by just staying mid for a while and gathering a bunch of resources. Go sneak to someone's shop and then go buy your stuff. It's just a really, really fun kit to use. Now, who doesn't like a Rage Blade? Barbarian has to be one of the most rewarding and punishing kits in the game, which makes it even more fun. Like, it's a game in itself. You're almost playing against yourself in some ways. I still remember the days when players would be able to, you know, damage themselves with TNT and level up their swords. Do you remember that? If you were like an OG, you'd probably remember that. With Barbarian, you can't buy swords. You can only earn better swords by causing damage to enemies and gaining rage. Once you gain enough rage, you earn a better sword, all the way up to a Rage Blade. So it goes from Wooden Sword to Stone Sword, Iron Sword, Diamond Sword, and then Rage Blade. Once you have a Rage Blade, though, you're not only a big target, you're also one of the most dangerous kits in the game because the sword causes massive damage. Now, Wizard is a super fun kit to troll with. You need to first buy your Wizard Staff with Emeralds, but once you have it, you can cause some awesome AoE damage using your Lightning Strike. I love using this when people are bridging, especially if they're trying to like get a drop on your bed or something. It is hilarious. Especially if they're on a bed, you can just drop it on their bed. Boom. They're, they're running around, you know, getting bolted. On the other hand, you can swap over to the Electrical Orb and cause some damage per second to anyone nearby it. Similar to Pyro, this kit is awesome when you combine it with enchantments like Static or Plunder in modes like 30v30, but Plunder is like one of the best ones because you just drop it into the entire like group of players and electrocute them. Now, Frosty's a fun one. Um, it is a weaker version of Wim. Essentially, Wim is way better than him. And honestly, I think it's only fair that he gets his Frost Snowballs back. You remember the Frost Snowballs? They would actually like slow players right out the gate. Considering how powerful Wim is, I think that's something that needs to happen. But that's a completely different conversation. Frosty is a ton of fun when you surprise players with your Snowballs and then knock them into the void, much like Wim. Or if you can get some enchantments that work really well with the Snowballs, even better. This kit was honestly tied with Gompy for me because Gompy is a super fun kit too. But still, with this one, you can't be regenerating free snowballs. I mean, who doesn't like free snowballs? Anyway, that completes our list of the most fun kits in Bedwars. Let me know what your favorite kit is for having fun. I'm not talking about kits that win. I'm talking about the kits that you really enjoy playing with. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next vid. Peace.